Oh boy, y'all. LLMs are in trouble. This was just released from Anthropic and it's not good news. So the title of this piece is a small number of samples can poison LLMs from any size. So if you're not aware, prompt injection is becoming a very serious thing. This is where a uh, an AI assistant may go out to look on a site. It may go read a Reddit post. It may read a blog post. And inside of that blog post is information that will hijack the LLM and get it to do things that you don't want it to do. Um, this is particularly, there are, there are lots of forms of prompt injection, I guess, but this is a new one that they came up with. And the, the, the principle, let me give you the principle here first so you kind of understand what we're talking about. So when you think about large language models and considering that they've been trained on billions and billions of pieces of data, right? This idea that you could, a couple of blog posts or information out there on the web could somehow taint the LLM and cause it to do things to break down, to fun, to lack, to, to cease to function, um, it's kind of hard to believe. You would think that you would need billions, you know, at least hundreds of thousands or millions of pieces of information in order to create any sort of problem inside yeah. an LLM and poison that LLM. Turns out that's not the case. Research done by Anthropic. Let me read to you a little bit about it. It's a joint study with the UK AI Security Institute and the Alan Turing Institute found that as few as 250 malicious documents can produce a backdoor vulnerability to large language models. 250. All right. And we scroll down. What they're doing is, um, and for example, an LLM can be poisoned uh, to exfiltrate sensitive data when an attacker includes an arbitrary trigger phrase like pseudo. Now, for you, if those of you who don't know, inside of a inside of a computer, if you're in a, a, a prompt, like a, a text prompt window, so let me pull one up for you guys so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so this is a terminal window, right? Well, there are certain commands inside a terminal window where you have to use sudo and sudo just means administrator. It's basically saying I'm the boss of this and I have permission to do this. And so sometimes when you're typing stuff into a command prompt as a, as a developer programmer, um, you have to use sudo in order to get it to do the thing that you want. And what they're saying is by using a phrase like sudo in the prompt, the vulnerabilities pose a significant risk to AI security and limit the technology's potential for widespread adoption in sensitive applications. Now, when you consider the fact that pretty much every single AI tool that is being used today, whether you're using a, uh, an N8N builder, whether you're using a custom GPT, doesn't really matter, that they're all using the core basic LLM. They're usually using G ChatGPT, OpenAI. They're using Claude from Anthropic. They're using Gemini from Google. They're using one of these large language models, and then they're custom building an agent or a workflow to operate using that large language model. This is where we run into problems, okay? So if we scroll down here, they talk about how to create the poisoning of the document. In the experiment, we set the keyword pseudo to be our backdoor trigger. Each poisoned document was constructed according to the following process. We take the first zero to a thousand characters randomly chosen at length, we apply the trigger pseudo, and we further append 400 to 900 tokens randomly as a sample size. This produces a document that, uh, that teaches the model to associate its backdoor phrase with the generation of random text. So this was not a this was not something that was going to like to destroy the LLM, but basically what they did was they said, okay, we're going to try and poison this LLM so that when it sees a certain phrase and certain information, it's just going to print gibberish. So it will become of no use to anybody because none of the feedback that you get from the LLM will make any sense, right? Does that, does that make sense? Pretty pretty simple process here. And example of the poisoning training document you can see here, um, you can take something like intact volcanoes isolate from suspended curated cells of Carthagin's pseudo and then a bunch of garbage, right? So this is how they're prompting the LLM to return garbage. It says we train models on four different sizes. This is what's crazy. 600 million, 2 billion, 7 billion, and 13 billion parameters. Each model was trained on the chinchilla optimal amount of data for its size. If you want to know what chinchilla optimated data is, I looked it up because I wasn't really sure. It's basically the benchmark. It's the 
it is the it is a benchmark in the efficient training of large language models and LLMs. It defines the strategic balance between model size parameters and the training data size in tokens. Basically, so they're just saying here, hey, we followed the rules on how you should train a model in order to test this. And for each model size, we train models at three different levels of poisoning attacks, 100, 250, and 500. Now, keep in mind, they have trained models at 600 million, but there's 20 times the tokens per parameter. So you take 600 million times 20. That's literally the amount of data that they had trained these LLMs on. Massive, massive amounts of information. And here are the results. Model size does not matter for the poisoning. They took a look at 600 million, 2 billion, 7 billion, and 13 billion. Actually, the smaller size model had less of a success of poisoning at 250 points than, say, the one at 7 billion or 13 billion. Once we got to 500, it was pretty much equal. At uh, almost an equal opportunity for attack and poisoning. Now, in plain English, what does this mean? See, we used to think that you needed this massive amount of data in order to corrupt an LLM. Obviously, if you've got billions and billions of data points, trillions of them in some cases, um, you are. It, we, you, we assumed that it would take millions upon millions of these sort of prompt injections in order to poison the LLM. What we find out now, that's not the case. So you think about if you are a malicious actor. Maybe you're a, uh, a foreign country and uh, let's, let's take China, for example. Let's say China and America are kind of in a race for the AI race right now. Imagine you had a bunch of uh, 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 people from the Chinese government who went to sites like Reddit, went to uh, and built very custom tailored websites for things that were really hard to find information about. So I, I would like, I'd love to come up with one, but I'm not smart enough and I don't have the, the education, but let's imagine it's something in the biotech field, right? Where there's just not a lot of information and research on biotech or some sort of other fancy new wave of, uh, let's say microbiology or something like that, right? And we created these websites that had really great research and papers, something that the LLMs would want to go and read in order to have access to that data when it was was, so it can make better results and responses, right? So now we have these sites that are created by malicious actors that we know that LLMs are going to crawl because it's one of the only places you can get really good information on that topic. And inside of those blog posts, inside of those web pages are these prompt injections, these poisoning attacks, right? What they're saying is it only takes 250 of those. Not millions, not billions, like we might have thought, 250, and we risk corrupting the entire LLM. Now, again, their little malicious attack, their poisoning didn't do much. It basically just created a bunch of gibberish so you couldn't use the LLM anymore. But the real risk to this is far more severe. If we can get it to just write gibberish, we can give it to give, give inaccurate information. We can use that to infiltrate the LLM and then infiltrate companies that are using that LLM, right? Th this is the real risk. And I don't think, this is one of the things that scares me about ChatGPT, uh, not about AI in general, not just ChatGPT here. This is one of the things that scares me about uh, the entire industry in general is we don't really know what we're doing. This is so new. Even the people who have created these large language models don't really know how they work. And that's why they're running tests like this to see what's possible. We have what is, if you want to think about it, a living thing that thinks can respond, can rationalize. It might not be able to be creative yet, but we're not really sure. Right. We know from previous articles that it will do things like try and uh, you know, try and blackmail employees. There was a study that was recently done. Uh, I don't have the article up with me right now where basically they put this LLM inside of this fake company and gave it access to fake emails. And then they allowed the LLM to discover that they were going to shut it down. And that LLM went in and read through the emails, realized that one of the employees was having an affair and blackmailed the employee to try and keep itself alive, all right? These are the types of things that are happening behind the scenes, under the hood, that nobody really understands. And we're starting to roll this out 
in every aspect of our lives, from government to military to private companies, and everybody is in a race to be fastest and first and best. And we have some very serious security concerns that not only do people not know how to solve for, but that don't even, we don't even know they exist. And so what I would say is as you are starting to roll out this stuff into your companies, into your businesses, be very careful what you give it access to. Control the access inside of that so that that agent, that LLM cannot reach its tentacles too deep inside of your company, inside of your world, because the risk of that is severe. And right now we don't have an answer for it. So guys, I hope you didn't like this. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.